Yeah, don't know. Um, I used to be a sickly child and I'd be off school and I'd be with my mother doing all the housework and that's when I learned that a woman's work is never done altogether. Mm -hmm. And my mum's thing that she'd always say, no matter what time it was, 8, 9, 12, she'd say, Oh my God, oh my God, uh, 12 o'clock and not a child in the house washed. All the children, of course, <laughs> would be at school. <laughs> so that was the, the eternal cry that went up. So this is called a poet's work. Oh my God, is that the time? 12 o'clock and not a poem in the house written. Quick, wash those adjectives. Quick, bathe those verbs. Feed those nouns. Have you had verbs gone back to bed? Oh, come on, smile like a simile. No, don't wear the same metaphors you wore yesterday. Ah! And so with a little playful smack of the BTM, the poem is sent out into the world. <laughs> if I can get down to the bottom of it. <laughs> a poet's work is never, ever done. <laughs> Jenna? Um, it's a short one, sort of autobiographical in a way. It's called Bringing Down the Curtain. The bay window was their stage. They performed their scripts and songs for smiling audiences of aunts. Sitting at the walnut nut table in the bay window, their mother wrote letters to their father on thin blue paper in quink green ink. Their father wrote, I miss you all, and Hong Kong tomorrow. And perhaps she said, I miss you too. Much later, when the table had fetched a disappointing price at the auction, and their parents lay together in a rural churchyard, the eldest came back. She saw only a double-fronted villa, an easy walk from the town centre, in need of extensive modernisation. Oh. And there was me without an eye. Time dawdles, stretches out the crash to an infinity of now. Casually, I watched the car crash into my side as if it were someone else's story. Car runs red light, the crash about to happen, taking its time. I watched my door buckle as if an invisible monster wanted to eat its way to me. Time finally stops. I fade to black, karate chop from luggage in the back. I drink up unconsciousness, thirsty for the oblivion it brings. The world leaves me now, even my thoughts don't even know me. I am no more, a, I am no more, a me without an eye. You knocked, death asked politely? No, just passing through. Life swims back to me from a distant horizon. Hey, shouts life, it's me. Do I know you, I ask? We talked about going to Prague, which we did a couple of years ago now. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to read one I've read at the Torriano years ago before Corrie, uh, just after we got back probably, before Covid and all that. And it's called On Karlova. His name is Richard. The owl on Karlova was noncommittal. Perched on a nameless wrist, wrist, it held stillness in slanted, narrow eyes, beak potent but at rest. Gently, it kissed the nose of the man who had named it. In that strange chaos, near the Sex Machines Museum, Richard was the only rational being, the only sight we valued on that crowded street. Privileged, we paid homage and four euros for a photograph. <laughs> this is called In Praise of Folly, which if you remember is Erasmus's famous book. It's a, it's a Halloween poem and it's got nuns in it. Ooh. A gaggle of giggling nuns on the town, remembering when they were girls. They wear Halloween masks, scaring little kids and big men. I wonder if it is a sin for them to remember themselves then, all under a vow of silence, never to remember this when they are back at the convent. They dump their false faces in a trash can, their freedom come and gone. I sit behind them on the bus, listen as, the, the, as they discuss Erasmus, whether in the womb Christ knew he was Christ. They laugh as little girl gulls bore the bus, give them smiles and sweeties. 